Around the world, ships carry billions of dollars worth of goods, powering a relentless, consumer-driven economy. Here's the surprising fact. 10 to 12% of all global trade depends on one vital waterway, the Suez Canal. This 120-mile stretch off Egypt's coast moved over 500 million metric tons of cargo in 2019, acting as a crucial lifeline for the global supply chain. Recognizing its immense potential, Egypt embarked on an ambitious modernization project in 2014 that caught the world's attention. So, what exactly did they achieve? How did this massive upgrade reshape Egypt's future and revolutionize global trade? Let's explore the story of the new Suez Canal. Whoever claimed life has no shortcuts clearly missed the mark, because nestled in northeastern Egypt lies one of the world's most vital shortcuts, the Suez Canal. Spanning approximately 120 miles, the Suez Canal is an artificial waterway connecting the Mediterranean Sea in the north to the Red Sea in the south. Though it might appear as just a narrow stretch of water, this waterway is no small feat. It saves sailors countless hours each year. That's because instead of having to loop around the entire African continent, ships from Europe can cut straight through to Asia in a fraction of the time thanks to the canal. At its entrances, you'll find two bustling ports. In the north, there's Port Said, right on the Mediterranean, where ships line up to begin their passage south. At the southern end, you'll find Port Suez on the Red Sea, which opens up a direct path to the Arabian Peninsula and beyond to the Indian Ocean. Combined, these ports manage an astonishing 10 to 12% of global trade, a figure that is almost beyond comprehension. This is more than just a canal. It's a vital artery for transporting some of the world's most valuable cargo, including oil and gas from the Middle East to Europe. So what does this mean for Egypt and the world? For Egypt, it's a crucial economic powerhouse that not only generates substantial revenue, but also secures the nation a significant role in global trade. And for the rest of the world, it's a vital trade route that can shift the balance of power. After all, the Suez Canal doesn't just shape commerce, it shapes connections, fuel supplies, and international politics. And with so much power, it's a no-brainer that the world reacted with immense fear when the Egyptian government in 2014 announced they would be working on the dam. But why? Well, the story of the Suez Canal Area Development Project starts with the canal itself, which, as we said, has been a vital shortcut for ships between Europe and Asia since 1869. Over the years, the canal has grown into one of Egypt's primary income sources. However, with global shipping rapidly expanding and Egypt's economy in need of a push, relying solely on toll revenue was no longer sufficient. Action was necessary. In 2014, President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi unveiled the new Suez Canal project, an ambitious expansion that introduced a second lane and significantly reduced transit times. This new addition was a colossal build and would shock the world as it was completed only a year later, instead of the typical five-year timeline for a project of this magnitude. The idea was to turn the canal area into a major economic hub. The goal wasn't just to help ships get through faster, though. It was to have factories, tech hubs, and logistics centers all around the canal creating jobs, generating revenue, and bringing in investment from all around the world. By doing this, Egypt hoped to turn the canal region into a launch pad for companies aiming to reach markets in Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. In fact, the Egyptian government held such high expectations for the project's economic impact that they forecasted a substantial increase in annual Suez Canal revenues from $5 billion to $12.5 billion, and the creation of one million new jobs. This monumental undertaking came with a steep cost of approximately 30 billion Egyptian pounds, equivalent to around 4.2 billion US dollars at the time. Adjusted for inflation, that's roughly $5.5 billion today. With such a hefty price and an economy needing help, you would think Egypt would look for help building. After all, the canal is vital to the world. Well, you would be wrong. Because interestingly, Egypt chose to fund this entire project domestically, disallowing any kind of foreign investment. Instead, 
the government called on Egyptian citizens to support the venture through bank certificates of deposit, which initially offered a 12% return that later increased to 15.5%. This approach not only secured the funds needed, but also strengthened a sense of national ownership, positioning the project as distinctly Egyptian. The project included plans to construct seven significant tunnels connecting the Sinai Peninsula to mainland Egypt, a task that alone equaled the entire project's cost. The Egyptian armed forces played a pivotal role in the canal's redesign and excavation, underscoring its immense strategic importance. To keep things within the country, local companies such as Arab Contractors and Oriscom took on construction contracts, keeping economic benefits largely within Egypt. So how did they do it? Well, the very first step was adding capacity to the canal itself. So in 2014, Egypt decided to expand the Suez Canal by digging a parallel waterway along 35 kilometers, or about 22 miles, of the canal's northern section. For context, that's the equivalent of 200 football fields laid end to end, or digging a continuous waterway that would take you from one side of Manhattan to the other almost four times over. This new Suez Canal would allow for two-way traffic for the first time, cutting down waiting times and nearly doubling daily capacity. This took an insane amount of excavation with over 40,000 workers on site working shifts around the clock to meet the deadline. The project used both traditional dredging equipment and advanced technology to remove the massive amount of sand needed to create this additional canal section. To put it in perspective, about 258 million cubic meters of earth had to be dug up. That was equivalent to creating enough space to fill over 100,000 Olympic swimming pools. Overall, a vast array of equipment was utilized for the project, including 33 dredgers and hundreds of support vessels for transportation and logistical operations. They used everything from barges to transport dredge material to advanced pumps for handling water flow and leveling the sandbanks along the canal. On a logistics scale, the project required a complex supply chain to provide fuel, parts, and maintenance for all this machinery and to ensure minimal delays. After countless hours of meticulous work, the outcome was a new 35-kilometer parallel waterway alongside the northern section of the canal. This expansion transformed the Suez Canal into a high-capacity modern trade route enhancing its ability to handle growing global trade volumes while solidifying Egypt's pivotal role in international shipping. But here's the crazy part. The project didn't end with building a new canal. See, once the canal was ready to welcome a surge in traffic, Egypt shifted its focus to building up the surrounding infrastructure, transforming the canal zone into a true powerhouse for trade and industry. This phase was all about putting in place the essential framework for large-scale economic and logistical growth. Taking a transportation-focused approach, highways and roads were at the heart of this transformation. Increasing the sheer scope of the project, the government constructed an extensive network of new roads to connect industrial zones, ports, and major cities. These highways were not just stretches of asphalt. They were the vital arteries that allowed for the large amount of goods to flow quickly and seamlessly to and from the canal. Every detail of the construction was carefully planned to ensure the roads could accommodate high traffic volumes, allowing businesses to transport materials and products with minimal delays. Next came the ports and terminals. Egypt poured resources into major upgrades at Port Said and Sakna Port. These ports, which were, by the way, already bustling centers of trade, were expanded with modern docks, high-tech cranes, and advanced container handling systems to accommodate the expected increase in shipping traffic. The new terminals were designed to handle specific types of goods, like oil, gas, and bulk materials, enhancing the port's versatility and efficiency. As a result, ships carrying diverse cargo could navigate these facilities more seamlessly, significantly increasing the region's overall trade capacity. Egypt didn't stop at roads and ports. They also invested in railways and airports to create a fully integrated network. New rail lines were constructed and existing ones were upgraded to connect the canal zone with other regions of the country. These rail links enabled fast, direct transportation of goods across Egypt, boosting both domestic and international trade. Meanwhile, nearby airports were upgraded to support cargo flights, business travel, and other international connections. With these enhanced facilities, 
global companies gained a dependable route for transporting goods and people to and from the canal region. With the transportation infrastructure set up, Egypt proceeded to develop industrial zones around the Suez Canal, establishing specialized areas to attract both local and international businesses. One of the first key areas was East Port Said, designed to support heavy industries like car manufacturing, chemical production, and engineering. Factories here were built with the canal in mind, strategically positioned so that goods could be shipped directly from the production line to the ports. This close setup was a major attraction for businesses, as it cut down both transportation time and costs, making it ideal for industries that rely on efficient logistics. Further south, Ain Sakna became the designated logistics powerhouse near the canal's Red Sea entrance. This area focused on creating large-scale storage and distribution centers, alongside high-tech warehouses and facilities tailored for e-commerce and digital trade. The setup here aimed to position Ain Sakna as a central hub for storing and redistributing goods quickly and efficiently throughout the region and beyond. Egypt also invested in technology and services hubs to attract tech companies and support the country's shift towards digital trade. Additionally, new technology parks were established with state-of-the-art telecommunications infrastructure, allowing data centers and research facilities to function at the forefront of innovation. This development transformed the Suez Canal region into more than just a manufacturing and logistics center. It became a prime location for tech companies seeking to establish data-driven operations. To sweeten the deal for international investors, Egypt established Special Economic Zones SEZs, within the Suez Canal region. These zones offered attractive incentives, including tax breaks, simplified customs procedures, and fewer restrictions on foreign ownership. In the end, SEZs provided companies with a favorable financial environment, while Egypt gained new jobs and boosted economic activity. A win-win for all. While impressive, constructing in the desert came with its own set of challenges. The intense heat, frequent sandstorms, and lack of water in the area created significant logistical and environmental hurdles. In response, engineers addressed this by installing extensive cooling and ventilation systems to keep both workers and machinery operating smoothly in the harsh climate. They also brought in water pipelines from other parts of Egypt to supply the factories and provide for the growing workforce. To add green spaces and improve the environment around the canal, the imported water also supported landscaping efforts. But perhaps the most concerning part of the project was the constantly shifting sands of the desert that required innovative solutions. Just as with the original canal construction, Advanced dredging technology played a crucial role in preventing sand from disrupting the building process and maintaining the canal. This ensured smooth operations, even in difficult conditions. Through meticulous planning and strategic investments, Egypt created a modern, interconnected industrial and logistics network around the Suez Canal, solidifying its position as a key player in global trade. Now, although the project was Egypt-funded, Egypt didn't build this behemoth alone. To speed things up, the government worked with major companies and engineering firms from all over the world. They brought expertise from countries with experience in large-scale industrial and infrastructure projects. China, for example, became a major partner as the development aligned well with its Belt and Road Initiative, which aims to create better trade connections worldwide. Today, the Suez Canal Area Development Project has significantly boosted Egypt's economy, drawing in billions through increased trade industrial activity, and foreign investment. The new infrastructure, roads, ports, and industrial zones, streamlined logistics, attracted global companies, and created thousands of jobs, while the special economic zones with tax incentives spurred investment and positioned Egypt as a prime trade hub between Europe, Asia, and Africa. Looking ahead, the ongoing expansion of the project is designed to promote tech-focused industries, increase exports, and deepen Egypt's integration into global supply chains, securing long-term economic growth and a robust, competitive regional economy. Given all this, what are your thoughts on the Suez Canal Area Development Project? Do you believe it will transform Egypt's future as a major global trade hub? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to stay updated on all things mega projects and groundbreaking developments, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an exciting update. Until next time.
Stay curious and keep exploring.